move to the Navy midshipman and Ken Neomatalola. No, last year was not good. Uh, he made a a calculated mistake. He he miscalculated. We'll say that. Sure. He did not tackle in practice last year, and it showed against BYU. No, don't get me wrong. BYU fantastic team last year, but they got walloped, and then they continued to get walloped throughout the season. They had a couple of you know decent wins and whatnot here and there, but you know the comeback against Tulane that was just he should be brought up on fraud charges for that. Oh, it's so ridiculous. The win total here sits at three and a half, and to go over three and a half is plus one hundred five. The under is minus one thirty five. SP Plus and FPI both have them going three and nine this year. Uh, defense was, um, they were, they were bad. Yep. I mean, they they just you know they were bad early for sure. Um, I think it had a lot to do with not tackling in practice. But either way, the first seven games they allowed four hundred forty five yards per game and thirty seven points per game. The last three. Now, obviously, the schedule helped with this. That's right. But they allowed 246 yards per game and only 14.6 points per game. Yeah, but they play bad teams, and then even when, it, it, like the Army-Navy game at the very end of it all. Yeah. Uh, that's a That was a mud fight, and, and it was a, a game where the other team, neither one of those teams cracked 100 yards almost. Yeah. Like, it was bad. So... That pulls the average down. Oh, it certainly a lot. does. It certainly does. And that's one of the better teams that they played. Yes. So uh, the offense only scored sixteen point six points per game for the season. They should be improved at quarterback this year. Uh, that should help bump the numbers up at least a little bit. They had twenty five first time starters last year. That could have had something to do with all these numbers. Um, they they should be better. They this should year, be better this year. What but do you, what do you think that? Dude, the schedule is oh unforgiving. Well, no, they they didn't get a single like nobody in the conference. Listen, at listen all. to how they start. Okay, Marshall, yep. Air Force at Houston, UCF, SMU at Memphis, Cincinnati at Tulsa at okay. Notre Dame, and then you've got East Carolina at Temple and Army on the back end. Yeah, they. I'm gonna tell you, <laughs> they better they better. I know you like East Carolina a lot. One of the reasons I'm going under is is Navy's not going to get blank through this thing. They're going to have to find a way to beat somebody. Yeah. They got to win ECU. They got to win Temple. Yeah. And, and that's just to get them to two. My question is this Do you go under, over, or under? Oh, I'm going way under. I'm under so three and a half. I don't know. Way under. Hell, it's hard to go un, way under. I think, but I think I, the most that I see them winning on the schedule is two games. So I do two. Air Force? Air Force is a toss up, but they won't be favored. Okay. Army. Army is not a toss-up. Army is expected to be favored by close to ten points. But what do you like? What do I? I, so I like they, Army. So in they that don't game. have a chance. So I like Air Force. I like Army. You I like, don't, I like you don't everybody. Think, so you don't like, think they have a chance to compete for the for the uh, Armed Forces Cup? No. Okay. That's no. what. That's because when I saw this schedule, my first thought was the only thing they're playing for is the Commander in Chief. Is the Commander in Chief Trophy? That's it. That's it. Because you look at this gauntlet, they need to circle Air Force Week Two. And they need to throw everything they've got at trying to win that game. Yeah. And then you've got the rest of the season to try to figure out how to beat Army. Because that's it. Yeah. You're not beating these other teams. They I mean, obviously, they always they, pull got, up, they got always pull Temple. an upset yeah. off and they always, you know, pull pull a rabbit out of their hat once or twice. But that doesn't save your season. If you come out of this year with only two wins, but they're against the other uh, uh military academies. Then you're all right. It's a it's a great season. No, you're right. A about great that. season. You are correct. That's what that, that was what I was curious. Do you think they can win either of those games? I don't, I don't think so. I don't. I don't I think don't. so. Uh conference odds, by the way, they are ninth uh to win the AAC yeah. at plus ten thousand. So yeah. there's basically no chance. Nobody's seeing that. Um but I've I've got them under three and a half. Now I will say this coming off of bad seasons, anytime Ken Neomatalola has had a losing season. He has come back the next year, had eight wins, and then the last time they did this, came back and had 11 wins. Yeah, had a real special season. But, I mean, there ain't no Malcolm showing up on this one. Well, and it's not just that. The American wasn't as deep as it is now. Oh, no, and they didn't have this. When I talk about this conference being, you know, easily, without question, a Power Five, this is what bothers me about college football fans. In one breath, they'll say, well, they would never hang with the Alabama or the Clemsons. Okay, that's fine. And then they say, well, the SEC is just top-heavy. Like, wait a minute. Hang on. 
The ACC is just talking about. I agree with both of those statements, which means if we take the top off of both of them and then throw the American in to all five of the Power Five conferences, take Oklahoma, throw them away, take Oregon, throw them away, this conference is head and shoulders better than almost all the rest of them. I tend to agree. And this is why I think Navy don't have the luxury that they had a couple of years ago. No, sir. Not when you are playing Air Force, Army. If they were out there in the Mountain West uh, with Air Force, it might be different. Yeah, it's entirely possible. Entirely possible. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.